Okay, here's some kind of just fun examples of how this works. This is Josh and Mabel. Josh is the boy. He's actually my son. He was 12 here when this picture was taken. He's 27 now, so that's why. <laughs> That's a very popular story. Being family members made them automatic research subjects. <laughs> Didn't have to worry about IRBs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Get over the lab and bring your dog. So we did a bunch of stuff where we hooked up Mabel the dog with portable recorders and Josh. And in this experiment, Mabel's off in one of the labs, the dog. Harvey them all over the place because she's exploring. This is off limits normally, you know, can look around. That almost identical state, obvious state shifts. So that's probably, like, that's about, probably the first recording of horse coherence. And the one horse who didn't had no response at all, just no normal, no shift. I found out, we were all blind to the date of the time, but found out later it was a horse with a personality that wanted nothing to do with humans. Very standoff personality, that kind of horse. So it's really interesting. And we've done this with mothers and babies and a lot of different things. Three minutes, oh boy. Okay, uh, this is a neat little study here, it's an independent study done in Singapore actually, where he brought 40 people in, put them around a table. We had a monitor for physiology. We got one person who's naive. They don't have a clue what the experiment really is. The other three were trained in how to shift into coherence. They were not experts who had just been trained a couple weeks before. Bottom line, just quickly, is when these guys shifted into coherence, and they went randomly in and out, it was a pretty, pretty rigorous protocol, there was a measurable effect on this guy. So just being in that coherent field environment had a measurable effect on the physiology of another person who didn't understand it, yes? Can you create a magnetic field artificially? Probably. An influence? Have you tried that? Uh, we've done some a few years ago, but it's, it's a little more complex than just a sine wave yeah. pattern or something, yeah. Have you looked at the converse? So people who tend to be somewhat sure. coherent but are not trained to maintain that, and introducing someone who's highly incoherent. Yeah, of course. I mean, it does. And it throws off the whole room? Well, of course it does. I mean, okay. how many environments you've been in and somebody comes in all or pissed off or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, actually, okay, so we do a lot of organizational work as well. In other words, what, when you introduce people, you teach people to be more coherent, more composed, more caring, so on in the work environment, that starts creating more what we call group coherence or organizational coherence. Enhances teamwork, improves communication, shortens meeting times, and so on. So if any of you are interested in some actual personal training, one option is what we call personal resilience mentoring. It's actually my favorite approach to this right now. Uh, where you work with a mentor over the phone, four to, usually four sessions is enough. And it's a really neat way to do it. We're doing this for the Air Force, Navy, and stuff now. It's a very effective way to actually train. So my time is up. So thank you for your attention. I hope this has been useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in, in the interest of letting you guys know the coolest stuff happening ahead of time, this is the new HeartMath iPhone connector. It has a sensor that goes to your ear, and it'll be coming out in February. Early February. Early February. And we will, of course, have them on UpgradeItself.com. In fact, if you liked the conference and you like this presentation, I would appreciate it if you buy your M-Wave for me, um, just because it helps to support all of this sort of stuff. This is way higher sampling rate than you could get off the little flash, the little thing on the back of the phone. So it's better than nothing to use the back of your phone, but if you want to do real heart rate training, this is the way to go. <laughs> also, I'm a certified coach uh, with uh, HeartMath, and all of my clients, I tell them, you need to do this. You've all listened to my podcasts. I keep talking about heart rate variability for a reason, and I think you might have just picked up some of the reasons I keep talking about this. It is that profound. <coughs> I've mentioned myself during a public presentation, uh, it was an online one so I could sit still instead of walking around and ended up with 70% coherence while I was speaking and I will tell you flat out if I want to get high marks in a public presentation and I'm a professional a keynote presenter kind of guy uh, I always go into coherence before I go on stage because I get higher marks from the audience it's quantifiable and I also can think about what I'm going to say next while I'm reading the audience and I'm saying something current You'll also notice how few times I say um when I speak, at least if you pay attention to ums, you will. There's a reason for that. Coherence really helps because ums are when your brain stops to go, ah, what do I do? What do I do next? Um, I gotta think, um, um, um. You can train that away. And one of the ways you do it is you actually, there's a, a switch inside your body that you can learn to do. And it sits right here and it's heart related or neurological, whatever the heck it is. 
you can learn to throw it. And when you throw it, you can be calm and focused, and people around you feel it, and it makes you more attractive, too, which is helpful if you're single. <laughs> which I'm not. <laughs> so, that said, it is my pleasure to introduce Chris.